How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffled Rowlett, and welcome back to a brand new video, guys. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some Pokemon rumors, things like that. So, sit back, relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get started. First things first is a rumor that was actually posted, I think, today. I, I could be wrong. I think this came out today, um, and I thought we'd just talk about it, see what it has to say. Uh, but there's also two other rumors we're going to talk about in this video. So, sit back, relax, just enjoy yourself, and let's read all about this. So, this one says Pokemon Legends ZA by Anonymous. Keep in mind, this is all on 4chan, so don't take this as being legitimate, like, information that's confirmed it's just a 50 50 gamble and honestly it's just something to keep us busy until we get actual official news revealed which uh most likely will happen in august so we got like about a month almost left still to go so it is what it is either way it says mayor colette requests the protagonist so they're implying that the mayor of the city of lumios in legend za is apparently going to be requesting you the protagonist uh, the player character to join the lumios construction team to help build up lumio city in the urban redevelopment plan of i guess you know lumios either way they say that there's a professor called philbert that gives you the starter choice of chespin fennekin froki so according to them they're gonna keep it the same as the original starters which uh, would be interesting i'm very curious i would love to know what you guys think about that are we gonna get the regular starters or is it gonna be like we had in legends rcs where there's actually different starters again there's no guarantees i don't know we'll have to wait and see um Moving on, though, they say Mega Evolutions, though, and then they list a bunch of possible quote-unquote Megas. Uh, first of all, Chestnut and Delphox. Those are big ones because those do not have Megas. Greninja is included as well, but the difference with Greninja is Greninja at least has the, like, Ash form or the Ash Greninja form. Like, that does exist, so it makes it a little less, you know, hype, but still a Mega Greninja is also peak. Uh, but yes, Chestnut and Delphox finally getting Megas. I do think even if they're not the starters of these games, like even if Chespin, Fennekin, Froki, if these guys are not the actual starters of these games, I still think they're going to get Megas though. Like even Legend, like no matter if they are starters of Legends Arceus, they're still going to get Megas in my opinion. At least that's the way I look at it. Um, moving on, they say Pangoro, which is a good Pokemon to have here. Pangoro, Slurpuff, and Noivern. All three of those will also get Megas. Pangoro makes sense. Slurpuff, a bit random, but I can see it being real. And Noivern definitely deserves it. I think Noivern is sick and making it even cooler will be awesome. Then they call something Lumion Forms, which I guess is supposed to be uh, kind of a play on Lumios, Lumion, you know. They say that Lumion forms are the following. First up is Sparrow, which is now Fighting Flying. Sounds like a realistic typing. Uh, we have Spinarak, which is Bug Ghost, so I guess they're going to make it into a dead little spider, which is unfortunate for Spinarak, but it is what it is. They also say that Clampearl, interesting. So Clampearl would be intriguing to see, because Clampearl, what does Clampearl even have? Like, it evolves into, like, Gorisby or something? Uh, or Huntail? It's like, isn't it like a split evo? I could be wrong here. Like, let me see, Clam Pearl. I haven't seen Clam Pearl in a long time. So, yeah, it can evolve either into Huntail or Goris Goribus or whatever it's called. I say Gorisby, I don't know why, Goribus. Um, but yeah, so again, water rock type. I don't really know how much that would impact it. It's currently just a water type regularly. Adding a rock typing to it might make it interesting. But like, at the end of the day, its evolutions are literally split and they're both water types. So, Again, I don't know what that's going to do, how that would even, like, what what difference would there be? Um, I can see that working, though, as rock, because keep in mind, it is a clam, and clams will be hiding either in, like, you know, you'll find them in sand or just, you know, at the bottom of water. Um, and I guess the rock typing would fit well with that. Either way, moving on, mud break ground steel. Now, this would make sense. First of all, the ground typing, that's good, but steel typing would also make sense, making it into almost a, you know... Like, think about, like, the hoofs of, a, of an actual horse. Uh, you have, like, you know, the... Um, I forget what the actual English word is for it, but, like, you have, like, the shoe... Uh, the horseshoes. There you go. It's literally what they call, I guess. Uh, but you have horseshoes, which are metal, and you can kind of play with that and make it, like, the whole design of the Pokemon metal by using that little tiny thing to, uh, you know, influence the design of it. So I think this list is pretty solid. Like, it's a strange mix of Pokemon, but interesting. Moving on, though, they said Lumia City and the Underground, apparently, is split into 10 areas, which all have separate mini games, side quests, and Mega Evolution bosses, implying that there's going to be Mega Boss battles in this game, which is mwah, very nice. Uh, moving on, though. They have say apparently the underground society below Lumio City are controlled by the Flare Division Squad, which apparently aims to restore Zygarde to complete form and take over Lumio City to prevent the urban redevelopment plan. Again, doesn't sound that crazy, doesn't sound that out of the, the realm of possibility, but I do wonder if they would be willing to make a whole underground city that essentially is a, uh, a you know, 
a reflection of the city above. I don't know. We'll see. There, of course, is a high chance we're going to get an underground section of actually Lumios, and that makes sense because keep in mind, it's based on Paris. Paris has an, an insane amount of catacombs, which are just these massive tunnels underneath Paris that run for an insane amount of space, right? There's so many of them, and they run on forever. Um, so it would make sense in that, in that way. Uh, moving on, though, they say that the underground society building... Okay, so we got right that. Unknowns are apparently scattered throughout Lumio City, and Zygarde cells are rewarded for beating Team Flare Division Squad members in the underground. That sounds like an interesting way to do things. Again, looking for unknowns doesn't seem that crazy. Um, and having the Zygarde cells actually being re a reward for beating the, you know, Flare Grunts, that would be an interesting way of doing it. Um, a separate bag for raw material needed to build up buildings and bridges. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, warped, apparently. Warped Battles. So Warped Battles is a new battle format that's a standard single battle with a unique twist in each Warped Battle. Examples of the types of twists you see in the Warped Battles are the following. Every move has one PP. That would be wild, okay? That would be wild. Uh, type charts are inverted. That sounds pretty cool. Speed, uh, speed based on HP, okay? Swapped teams, that sounds fun, and can only use Pokemon caught with a Great Ball. That... Okay, listen, out of every rumor I've read, this is, like, one of the most interesting things. Dude, if they genuinely did like this and made a new battle format that would essentially be, like, random battles almost, like, fully randomized battles. Think about, like, when you randomize, like, a Pokemon ROM hack or something like that, or just a regular ROM that you randomize with, like, a randomizer tool. You can randomize the typings, the moves, the abilities, all that kind of stuff. But imagine that being officially in a Pokemon game. Like, them actually taking a fan-made thing and in inputting it into future projects Oh, that would be so goaded, dude. That would be so freaking good. But uh, again, it is, it is, it is Game Freak we're talking about here, and I, I'm very suspect of this not being something that they would do. Uh, though it would be sick. I'm not gonna lie. This would genuinely be so freaking cool. But there's no guarantees. Uh, either way, though, standard single battles are also present. Okay, and then apparently, Sunny Day, Rain Dance, Sandstorm, Snowscape, Sweet Scent, and Trick Room have the outside battle effect of altering the type of Pokemon you'll find within the current area you're located. That would be sick. That would be great. If, if I use Sunny Day, I want to see a bunch of Pokemon that would be out during sunny times. If it's Rain Dance, I want to see a bunch of mud Pokemon, just, you know, like whoopers and shit. That actually sounds pretty good. Like, that, that sounds pretty, pretty sick. Again, a lot of stuff in this rumor just sounds really fun. It sounds really good. It doesn't, again, sound too crazy or too lame. It sounds, like, intriguing. And to me, the best part about this would be if the warped battles were a real thing. Like, if we actually had warped battles... Yo, they, dude, them taking literally a fan-made aspect of Pokemon and then shoving it in here... Wow, fantastic. I, I could not be any happier. Like, it would be so good. But again, it's it's up for debate if it's actually real. Moving on, though, we have this post right here. This was posted, uh, I think, last week. I just didn't cover it yet. Um, as you guys may have noticed, I've tried to not do too many of these videos all the time. Uh, I'm trying to, like, not spam you guys with too many of these. I'm trying to keep it, like, you know, you know, every other day or so, every two or three days. Uh, I'm trying to post if there's, like, anything interesting to cover. So uh, I've kept this one on me for a bit now, and I decided, you know what? It's time to cover it. So... Here's what this rumor has to say, uh, so let's take a look at it. It starts things off with saying, Pokemon Legends EA leaks by Anonymous, posted on the 11th of July, 2024. He says, I was at a briefing for the Pokemon Company Incorporated marketing team, or marketing, I guess. I was shown concepts and about 30 minutes of gameplay of the new Pokemon game. So I know almost nothing about the plot, only gameplay and some dialogues were shown. There are many trainers in Lumio's city, apparently. Two NPCs, a woman professor, has red fiery eyes and hair, and a young man dressed in white with a very large scarf. Maybe, maybe married? I don't know. Apparently, combat seems faster than previous games. That would be so good, but something that I have an issue with with Pokemon is that the combat can feel very just boring after a while in Pokemon. Like, it can get very tedious after a while. Like, just the same old click button, this happens, click button, this happens, wait for animation to play. And I think Skull and Bella did that even worse because of the fact that we kind of removed things that were good in Legends Arceus. Like, the actual movable camera that you can actually walk around during the battles, which was sick. Seeing your Pokemon actually battle in the overworld uh, in those, like, large scales. Like, that kind of stuff made it so much more fun. But I feel like in Scarlet and Violet, they kept part of it, but removed other aspects. Like, you can't really walk around during your battle. You can only really rotate the camera, and that's about it. Um, which made it a little less interesting. So I hope that they do decide to do something like this, where they actually keep uh, the combat fast-paced 
add in features like you walk, walking around during battle and just keeping it like the fluid, right? Like make it feel fluid, dynamic, and not just static and boring. Um, but that's the way I feel about it though. They say apparently the combat's gonna be faster than previous games, which again, I am very much on board for. Moving on, Pokeballs look slightly different. One looks like the city from above. Okay, that would be, not gonna lie, that would be pretty weird, um, but okay. Uh, moving on though, they say Megas, apparently Mega Lapras, Mega Charizard Z, Mega Flygon, Mega Zoroark, Mega Chimecho, Mega Florges. Again, a lot of these are Megas that you kind of would expect or kind of are predictable, like Mega Flygon is one. Mega Zoroark, I feel like that's just like a fan-made one I've seen by, uh, by Subarashi, like one of our friends. Uh, Mega Chimecho I've seen as well as like a fan art and Florges, that's a random one, but I could see that one being actually real. Mega Lapras. Lapras did get a Gigantamax form recently in Sun and Moon. So, I, oh, sorry, Scar, uh, Sword and Shield. So I don't know if we're going to see that in this game. Um, but also Charizard Z, that seems highly realistic in my opinion. A Z form of Charizard because we have the X and Y forms, but a Z form would make sense. And apparently you could ride Pokemon uh, to go on walls, on rooftops, in the sewers, and to fly, which please let this be real. Like, please let that aspect, out of everything else, please let at least that aspect be real because I would love that so, so much. Um, but it's scary to think that, you know, it most likely wouldn't be. All right, but for now, let's move on to the next thing because I'd love to know what you guys think about this. So let's move on to this right here, which was a post made also on, uh, well, of course, the uh, 4chan uh, community. And well, what does this one talk about? Well, it says the following. So uh, Gen 10 is split, is lit part two by Excelsior26, who says, so I tried posting this a little while ago, but I haven't been able to find it again. Here are some additional rumors and clarifications from my previous post. Now, after talking with my source, don't know how reliable he is. So therefore, I don't know how accurate this information is. Apparently the TPCI or the Pokemon Company Incorporated wants to have 1,251 Pokemon by the end of generation. 10. This will include the new Pokemon, if any, in PLZA, okay, and Gen 10 base game games and the Gen 10 Legends games, if there is one. So my previous post about 200 plus new Pokemon in this game alone may be off the mark. Didn't take into account PLZA. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the new battle mechanics, which has nothing to do with the crossbreeding mechanic, is based off of or caused or influenced by Game Freak's take on Ulu? Wait, Uluru? I have no idea what that is. I'll look it up if you don't know what it is. Maybe uh, Oni Mountain was a hint, which will go hand in hand with the Aboriginal folklore. Okay, apparently the new battle mechanics. So, which has nothing to do, apparently the new battle mechanic, which has nothing to do with crossbreeding mechanic is based off of or caused by, okay, again, the, you know, the Game Freak's take on Uluru, which again, I don't understand the logic behind it, but whatever. The theme of this generation is exploration and discovery. Okay, that would be cool. Uh, the DLCs, while going to familiar areas, Kanto, Johto, Unova, Lola, will focus more on areas that we haven't been able to go on previous non-open world games. I think Unova and uh, Alola would make sense-ish, as it would be the 10th anniversary of Sun and Moon, and also uh, USA's, the United States 250th uh, anniversary, though the docks would actually drop in 2027, so I don't know. First of all, talking about the DLC for a game that most likely is only really still now in its early developments or mid-development or something, is a little ridiculous. Like, the DLC is so far, you know, shot off in the distance. Like, that seems a little crazy to already be predicting or talking about that. But let's read the rest of it. He says, the games are serving as a thank you and a love letter to the Pokemon fans from TPCI and Game Freak. All right, well, that would be that would be neat, I guess. Like, you know, again, I would love if that's the actual case. Was told that the reaction to the Dun Dun Spars will be a thing of the past and that there is a reason uh, for the two and three segment form. Okay, so he's saying there's going to be another form of Dun Dun, uh, of Dun Spars, I guess. Uh, the age slash experience question at the beginning may also act like a difficulty setting. So that would be interesting if they actually did that. Like when you choose in the beginning of your game, you know, if they gave you like a, an option of like, hey, have you played Pokemon before? Or have you not played it? If you played it before, then yeah, you know, here's some, exp you know, here's making us, making the game easier for you or let us explain how it works and all that kind of shit. Um, that's fair enough. Uh, they say the AI will uh, will make battling more difficult as it will learn from you as the game progresses, making battles more intense and challenging. Actually, that would be pretty cool. That actually sounds pretty lit. He did tell me that they had take uh, they had taken another look at Gorochu as a possible alternative evolution to Pikachu. I highly I highly doubt this. Uh, put 
put wait but i guess it's possible okay titles are pokemon forever and pokemon always uh kidding about the last part still not a clue what they uh still no clue what they're called yeah forever and always just do not sound like good pokemon game names i'm gonna be real with you they just do not sound like good names for games but again i digress maybe i'm wrong maybe those are great names maybe you guys like them i don't know but point is this rumor it's too thin. It's way too thin. Way, 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 way too thin. Nothing here stands out necessarily. First of all, knowing about the DLC this early on, this is not realistic. Um, them including Alola, Unova, all this shit as DLC, again, unrealistic. Like, think about it. We didn't even get Alola, U Unova technically even as DLC. Unless, like, you want to count the Indigo disc as kind of being Unova because it is located in Unova, but we didn't get to literally go to Unova itself, like the region you remember from Gen 5 from Black and White. You didn't get to explore that actual region. It was just, you know, a location within the zone of you know the Unova region. Like, we didn't actually get to go into the region itself the way we remembered it. It's just a version of that. A school, literally. That's all it is. So, I kind of look at it as, like, a little less important, a little less, like, realistic. It's just, I don't think about this rumor as being much real. But again, Gen 10 is something that we should talk about. There's a lot of discussion and a lot of things that I feel in regards to Generation 10. I had a feeling that it was going to come out next year. But the fact that Legends Arceus still doesn't have a release date makes me fear that we're not going to get that next year. And we're probably going to have to wait for Generation 10 the year after, which means it's going to be a long time until we finally get Generation 10. And that means they're going to be skipping one year, which is the first time since I think... I think this is the first time since basically black and white that they're skipping a gen every three years. Like, this is the first time since then that they're doing it, which is pretty crazy. But, yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think about all these rumors, though, in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts on the first one, the second one, and the third one? Let me know, and I want to thank you guys all for watching. As per usual, make sure to subscribe down below if you did not already do that. And, you know, stay tuned for future videos. I love you all, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, and bye-bye.